Welcome to A level and AP physics a place where you can improve your understanding of physics with confidence in today's class We will talk about Hall effect from Cambridge A to physics in this lesson We will explore some important concepts about Hall effect with the help of past paper questions for this question a rectangular slice of a semiconductor material is given to us as you can see in figure 8.1 direction of magnetic field is also given to us and direction of incident electrons is also given and it is also given to us that each electron has charge minus cube and drift speed is V in the slice what we need to find out simply we need to state the magnitude and direction of the force due to magnetic field on each electron as it enters the slice now first of all let's try to find out magnitude first of all let's try to find out magnitude of magnetic force force due to magnetic field simply means magnetic force and magnetic force simply we understand this is equal to q v b sine of theta and theta is the angle between direction of magnetic field and q means between direction of magnetic field and direction of flow of charge as you can see here in this case v uh, in this case b is perpendicular to direction of flow so simply we can say that angle is 90 degrees so fb we can simply write down this will be equal to q vb because sine of 90 degrees this is equal to 1 so the magnitude is simply q v b so we can write down magnitude of magnetic force on each electron now next what we need to find out we simply need to find direction of force on electron direction we need to find out for this one we can simply assume that as electrons are entering from this side we can simply assume that the positive charge will be entering from this side now we have direction of positive charge now and we have direction of magnetic field so we can use Fleming left hand rule and we can find out direction of magnetic force on electron Let's try to understand a little bit about Fleming left hand rule. Fleming left hand simply means you have to use your left hand and thumb will point always in direction of magnetic force and the first finger will point in direction of magnetic field middle finger will point in direction of current and this current is always conventional current means middle finger points in direction of conventional current so this is very important we have to be very clear conventional current simply means that current due to flow of positive charges so we can also write down here current due to flow of positive charges let's say a force is given to us magnetic field is given to us means we know what is direction of force what is direction of magnetic field and if we need to find current we can simply find out and let's say current is given direction of conventional current is given to us and direction of magnetic field field is given and we need to find direction of force so again we can use Fleming left hand rule and we can find and if current is given magnetic force is given and we need to find direction of magnetic field we can also use Fleming left hand rule and we can find direction of magnetic field means direction of external magnetic field we can find out so this is external magnetic field I will simply say this is external m field now for this question direction of incident electrons was given to us so we find out direction of positive charge means current due to flow of 
positive charge so we said positive charge will be flowing in opposite direction now as you can see here we have direction of flow of positive charge and we have direction of magnetic field so we can find out direction of force as in this case you can see the current this is current its direction is out of the page and magnetic field is down direction of magnetic field is down as you can see this is out of the page and direction of magnetic field is down so direction is so direction of force is this way means it is from left to right or we can say it is from p to q so the force on electrons is from p to q so we can also write down here direction of magnetic force on electrons is to the right or we can say it is from p to q you can also say that it is from s to r you can also say s to r as you can see here s is here r is here you can say also s to r here is our final answer let's try to answer part b now for part b1 simply we need to state the two phases between which hall voltage is establish as in part a we have already seen that as these electrons they will enter the magnetic field they will experience magnetic force and direction of magnetic force in this case is to the right so it simply means that these electrons will be deflected to the right so this side will be more negative as compared with this side as you can see one side is more positive one side is more negative so there is electric field between these two faces now if we take voltmeter and we connect between these two faces we can read hall voltage simply from this voltmeter hall voltage is established between these two faces one face is this and the second face is this. Now simply we can write down it is established between E H S P F G R Q. Let's move on to second part now. For second part simply we need to use letters from figure 8.1 to identify the distance t and t you can also see in this formula it is here t often we call this is thickness of semiconductor material so we can say simply this is thickness of material semiconductor material so the thickness this is thickness of side through which magnetic field is passing so we can simply say this is thickness of side through which magnetic field is passing. So in this case magnetic field is passing through this side. We can simply say this is value of T. So we can say T is equal to QF. We can say T is equal to QF or we can say T is equal to PE. For part C, density of aluminium is given to us and it is also given to us that there is only one free electron per each atom of aluminium. We need to show that number of charge carriers per unit volume are equal to 6.0 times 10 to 28 per cubic meter. Now, for this question, it is given to us that density is equal to this and we need to find out number of charge carriers per unit volume per unit volume simply means per cubic meter we need to find out so the best way can be we can convert this density as you can see this is given 2.7 gram per cubic centimeter it simply means if we have one cubic centimeter of aluminium the mass is equal to this one now this one we can also convert into kg per cubic meter because we need to find the number of charge carriers per cubic meter so we just need to simply multiply by 1000 and we can convert into kg per cubic meter now from here you can see we have total mass of one cubic meter so we need to find out number of charge carriers 
per unit volume. So how we can find out number of charge carriers? We simply need to divide total mass total mass of one cubic meter by mass of single atom by mass of one atom so we can find out number of atoms per unit volume and that number of atoms per unit volume are also equal to number of electrons per unit volume so this is also equal to number of electrons per unit volume so simply this is what we need to do so as you can see here i have already done these calculations so we can go through this one so you can have better understanding mass of single atom as you can see here i have already found so this is 27 times 1.66 times 10 to minus 27 negative 27 and here is density i have converted into kg per cubic meter and here is our formula and we just plug in numbers so this will be our final answer and this is what we need to show here is the last part of this question and for this part it is given to us that thickness is equal to this so simply this is value of t and i is given to us current is given and it's value is equal to this flux density magnetic flux density is given so this is simply p and question is also telling us that we need to use value in one to calculate hall voltage that is generated c1 actually this is referring to c1 in c1 we have calculated n means the number density number of free electrons per unit volume or simply we can say number of charge carriers per unit volume we have calculated so we need that value to calculate hall voltage first of all we need to understand the equation for hall voltage that is equal to b i over n t q this equation is also given on equation sheet you can also find from there b as you can see b is given t is given i is given n is given q is a constant and this is charge on single electron so this is equal to 1.6 times 10 to negative 19 coulombs so this is constant so you can also find value of this constant in data table so now simply what we need to do is we need to just plug in all the values and we will be able to calculate vh as you can see now i have already calculated value of vh what i have done is that i have simply plug in values you just need to plug in values and this is constant this is q and this will be over final answer so our final answer for this part is 8.0 times 10 to negative 7 volt Mm-hmm.